Hey everybody, this is Dr. Maples, and today we're back with 5-Minute Sociology. Today I'm going to tackle Mead's generalized other. We're going to get a working definition of this idea, we're going to give two examples, and then we're going to try to think about some of the bigger ideas behind this theoretical perspective. Got a lot to do today, let's get started. When we're making decisions and choices in our lives, we aren't generally just doing them. We're actually reflecting on a whole bunch of interactions we've had in the past, present, and honestly, even in the future. And we take that bit of information from these interactions with other people, with other ideas, with other institutions, and so forth, and they actually shape our behaviors. The idea here is that the decisions we make and things that we choose to do are shaped by others. And the cool thing is, is they may actually not even be present in the moment. So interactions with your grandmother and the things that you think are right and wrong in the world can stick with you for generations after your grandmother passes away. Now, this generalized other is originated in George Herbert Mead's work on the self. And this is an idea that tries to say, you know, we're all individuals, but we're also being socialized by all these things happening around us. And the generalized other is a great example of putting how our individual individual experiences are shaped by others into practice. Let's dig a little bit more into that. Oh, Dr. Maples has a new camera angle. Now, let's think about an example of the generalized other as it references to how do we know how to be a student? All these interactions that you've had throughout your life with other teachers, students, and so forth have taught you how to be a student. For example, for me, when I think about being a student, I immediately think of Ms. Ledbetter in kindergarten teaching me that I needed to raise my hand to speak and ask permission to go to the bathroom. Later, teachers would add new ideas to this. We have to take notes in class. We have to come to class prepared with our textbooks and our materials. Likewise, we just have to be a good student and turn in things on time. Throughout, you're interacting with teachers that are teaching you how to be a student. Likewise, you've been watching the students around you, and so you learn little things from them. For example, I see if I have a class issue or I have one student on the front row who's texting, everyone else will get out their phones. It's a thing. You see other students behaving a particular way. You take that information that says, oh, it's okay to behave this way. You take that information and it shapes how you behave. So in this example, you're getting all that information and it teaches you how to be a student. Let's look at another quick example. So to play on that previous example, I wanna give my own example of the student teacher thing with my dissertation chair, Stephanie Bahan. Stephanie's in my head. You know, whenever I'm making a decision as a professor or as a researcher, I'm thinking about what Stephanie would do. Likewise, her work ethic has really rubbed off on me. I publish far more than it's expected to be at a teaching university. I'm mentoring undergraduate students and publishing their own studies, which is pretty much unheard of at my level. And I'm also trying to make sure that my research is more than just a pile of papers on a desk somewhere, that my research is doing something. But throughout my job and literally on a daily basis, I've got Stephanie in my head saying, you need to do this, you need to do this, you need to do this. And it's worked out for me for the most part. So thanks, Stephanie. Back to this lecture. Now, I want to do some bigger perspectives on the generalized other. First off, we have to remember that there's multiple voices shaping those behaviors. I may have my dissertation chair and my kindergarten teacher telling me how to be a student, but I also kind of have like things like TV, I had my friends in college, and all sorts of other inputs telling me how I should behave. Even my family giving me certain input on how a student should and should not behave. And these voices conflict, so sometimes we're left trying to suss out which voice we're going to listen to. Another issue, too, is that laws are actually sometimes codified into our certain beliefs on the generalized others. Things that become legal requirements suddenly shape our behaviors, and not conforming to those ideas creates a whole new level of individual problem for us. Finally, too, we have to think about the fact that people in powerful positions may want us to behave a particular way. And that's where the generalized other can be very, very powerful. We're taught by people who are very important in our lives, such as my grandmother, how we should and should not behave. And I know better than to break a rule in front of my grandmother, even though she's long left this planet. These are all some bigger perspectives on the generalized other. Generalized other was one of my favorite ideas as an undergraduate student studying symbolic interaction. And I'll be happy to do some more videos on those theories and symbolic interaction. But in the meantime, please like the channel, subscribe to it, and share it with your friends. I need your support to keep this channel afloat. So if you could do that for me, I'd appreciate it. Likewise, if there's an idea you'd like me to cover, leave it in the comments below. Timer's ticking. I'll see you later.